Good morning. I'd like to welcome you back to our fourth Anchored in the Word Morning Reflection. It's Thursday, and I hope you've been having a great week. This is only our third Anchored in the Word for this text that we're dealing with. Uh, we're trying to condense it a little bit because last week we did six episodes rather than five as we normally do. But anyway, the text is Psalm 96. We're looking at the topic of a healthy motivation and missions. And this morning, our focus is on the pressing nature of this command. And it's a little bit more of a further development of what we talked about yesterday. So let's all take our Bibles out. Let's turn to Psalm 96 and read it together, please. And then we're going to focus in on the reason, the for, why this is such a pressing issue. Psalm 96, 1. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. See among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. Now we're talking about the pressing nature of this command. And the reason that this is such a pressing command is because of the greatness of God. Now, Lord willing, tomorrow we're going to talk about the other side of the issue, and that is not who God is, but who the gods are that these people are worshiping. But we want to focus in on the greatness of God. And the word that I want to present to you is the word incomparable. He is without comparison. And the text says several things about God's nature, his perfections, and I want us to reflect on them a little bit this morning. And if we have a big view of God, we're going to be motivated to tell people about him. If we are overwhelmed by his greatness, we can't help but be a humble and thankful and grateful people. And so notice some of the things that we see in verses 4 to 9. He says, for the Lord is great. He is greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. All the gods of the nations are idols. He goes on later and he says to give unto the Lord the glory that is due unto his name and to bring an offering into his courts and to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. There are several pieces in these verses that I want to draw out and I want us to think about. So the first of these is that this is the logical reason. There are actually two logical reasons that we find in Psalm 96. This is the first of those and we see that in the word for. It is because of his greatness, his nature. Psalm 86 verse 8 says, among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither is there any work like unto thy works. You see the concept of incomparable greatness. Or Jeremiah 10 6, he says, there is none like unto thee, O Lord, art, thou art God, thy name is great and it is mighty. We, we think of another example of this. He is without any rival that is truly a legitimate rival. He says that he is to be feared above all the gods. Now, notice that G is a small lowercase g. And the idea is that these are not true gods, but these are objects of worship in the world. Psalm 95 verse 3, the Lord is great and a great king above all gods. Or Psalm 97 verse 9, the Lord, O Lord, thou art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted above all gods. Psalm 135, verse 5. I know that the Lord is great and that the Lord is above all gods. Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in heaven and earth and the seas and all deep places. So it's not just that he is incomparably great. There is no rival to him when it comes to the gods of the nations. And then we're reminded that he is the creator and sustainer of a beautiful creation. And we touched on that last uh, in our last study that was yesterday, but we're going to think about this again together this morning. Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So when we look up into the sky and we see its beauty 
and we see the incredible order of creation, those are things that ought to remind us there is a great God who is to be praised. And then we think of another example. He is majestic. He is full of splendor. It says, honor and majesty are before him. And that reminds me of Psalm 29. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Or Psalm 93, the Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also established. It cannot be moved. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and with majesty. Another example, his strength and beauty are unlimited. We see that when he says strength and beauty are in his sanctuary, his immediate presence. First Chronicles 29 is one of the most familiar passages that comes to my mind about this topic. He says, riches and honor come of thee. Thou reignest over all, in thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. What is the point of passages like these, where we talk about giving to him the glory due unto his name and worshiping him in the beauty of his majesty? What is the point? The point is, this is who God is, and we need to know him, and we need to worship him, and we need to treasure him, and we need to bring glory to him, and if people don't know him, then we need to tell them about him. And, and so this is the idea. This is the focus. One of the reasons that we are to be pressed on this issue is because God is great and his praises need to be revealed. Well, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Lord willing, tomorrow we'll meet for some final thoughts. And I hope that the things we talk about are both an encouragement on a daily basis and also whet your appetite for some of the things we'll be talking about when we come into our missions month. Have a blessed rest of your day. Lord willing, we'll meet again tomorrow. Bye now.